Catherine Bigelow is a film director who made a movie almost no one went to see about a subject, the Iraq War, the Hollywood studios were afraid of. And yet her film, The Hurt Locker, beat out the biggest grossing movie of all time, Avatar, for Best Picture at the Oscars. And she became the first woman ever to win for Best Director. Bigelow, who's been making movies for more than 30 years, became known for her high-intensity action films, but none of them received as much critical acclaim as The Hurt Locker. As we reported earlier this year, we met with Catherine Bigelow after the Oscar nominations were announced, but before the envelopes were opened. The story will continue in a moment. Critics say that Catherine Bigelow's Hurt Locker is the best war movie made in years. And there was an irony in the fact that it was up against James Cameron's Avatar. How sweet is this to be head to head <laughs> with your ex-husband? Incredible that the two films were made by people who are married to each other. You couldn't have scripted it. <laughs> well, there's this whole thing that's going on where people love to, they love to create a headline. The Battle of the Exes, you know, War of the Roses. We were married two decades ago for a brief period of time, and we've been friends and collaborators since. As we talked about this with Bigelow at a ranch where she escapes from the hoopla of Hollywood, she said she and Cameron are now such good friends they swapped scripts and early versions of each other's movies. When he saw Hurt Locker, did he say, you ought to do this, you ought to do that? He said, cut negative. What is cut negative? That cut means ne perfect. Cut negative means you're, you're done yeah. editing. Cut negative means it's perfect. It was a big compliment. <laughs> and her little movie ended up with just as many Oscar nominations as Cameron's blockbuster, nine for both. I was stunned, shocked, Thrilled beyond belief. Best actor. Yes. Best screenplay. Best picture. Best director. Yes. In The Hurt Locker, a riveting two hours filled with fear and violence, Bigelow shows how terrifying it is for a bomb squad in Iraq. Butcher shop, two o'clock, dude has a phone! Here, they're trying to stop that butcher from detonating an IED with his cell phone. Put down the cell phone! By using wobbly handheld cameras, Bigelow heightens the tension and the sense of immediacy. She wants the audience to feel like the fourth member of the bomb squad. The ground just erupts out of nowhere. I mean, it's just an incredibly harrowing, dangerous, volatile environment. She sees the film both as anti-war and as a tribute to the soldiers who sign up to do this kind of work. These are men and women who volunteer, who are there by choice, who are walking toward what you and I and perhaps the rest of the world would run from, and they arguably have the most dangerous job in the world, yet they're there by choice. They don't know where to look. They you don't, don't know where know. to look. It's an invisible enemy, and you don't know if the man on the third floor balcony is shaking out a rug or calling in a sniper strike. But beneath all the action is a film about the psyche of soldiers under siege. Bigelow opens the movie with a quote. The rush of battle is often a potent and lethal addiction, for war is a drug. But it's also a sense of meaning and purpose that nothing else in your life can replicate except the battlefield. Her main character, Sergeant Will James, can only function when his life is in danger. He's a go-it-alone cowboy who breaks the rules. Oh, God. And terrifies his squad members with reckless behavior. What's he doing? I don't know. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die comfortable. He's like fearless that. as he looks for bombs. And when he defuses one, he then has to deal with the usual secondaries. Secondary. Take cover, get in the wall, get in the wall. Oh boy. It never stops in this movie. <laughs> really, it is one intense moment right, right. after the next. Right. Right. Without let up. Without let up. She likes to watch mm -hmm. and she captures. She's a painter. Right. So Jeremy Renner plays Sergeant James. 
I don't know anybody who has seen this movie who says, I can't believe a woman directed this movie. Mm. The violence, the macho-ness. And what does having um, a set of ovaries have to do with directing a film? It's through her eyes that she sees, not through her memories or anything else that defines her as a woman, right? This muscular, somewhat violent world that she's attracted to. Do you understand what it is she's drawn to there? I think the idea of war and conflict fascinates her. And so it's something that's out there in the world that she's trying to understand. But I think she also takes pride in the fact that she can outgun the guys. You know, that just in pure technique, just pure game, she's got more game than most of the male directors out there. Bigelow is 58, and The Hurt Locker is her eighth movie. And if she has a signature, it's exactly that a concentration on tough guys like Harrison Ford and Liam Neeson in K-19, The Widowmaker, and on daredevils like Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze in Point Break about an FBI agent who goes after a ring of bank robbers. I'm drawn to provocative characters that find themselves in extreme situations, and I think I'm drawn to that consistently. She's been drawn to it ever since the early 70s when she was in New York studying painting and one night went to the movies with some friends. The film was Sam Peckinpah's The Wild Bunch, a Western known as much for its body count as its art. It could be very visceral. violent, it could be exactly. very bloody. It could very, very visceral. Very, you know, and you were just, you were enraptured with this material. And enraptured because she realized that unlike painting, film could make you physically feel what the characters in the film were feeling. One of her professors described it as... Scopophilia. Scopophilia? Scopophilia, which is the desire to watch and identify with what you're watching. Is that when you said, it has to be film? I have to make movies? It was just, it was like suddenly I had woken up from a drought and there was water in front of me and I was just, I couldn't get enough. Watch Hurt Locker and you do feel what the characters feel. As in the sniper scene, where the unit is pinned down all day long out in the desert. The audience feels the fear, the heat, and the thirst. Bigelow shot the movie almost entirely in Jordan, part of it in this Palestinian refugee camp. <laughs> and used displaced Iraqis as characters and extras. With a measly $11 million budget, the actors and crew had to take their breaks in Bedouin tents. No air conditioning for anyone. I think what was in our head was to survive any given day. I mean, you're in the <laughs> Middle East, you're in the summer, you've got sandstorms, windstorms, probably an average of 115, 120 degree heat. Your lead actor is in a 100 pound bomb suit. The cast had other challenges, since Bigelow often shot takes with four cameras rolling simultaneously, never telling the actors where the cameras were. Anthony Mackie plays Sergeant J.T. Sanborn. I've never shot a movie like that before. So you always knew where the camera was always. and had to worry about it. What this... was my good side, where my light was coming <laughs> from, how should I talk to you? I've... That's how you make movies. But this was different. This, this was, was almost different. like a documentary. And it was, it was guerrilla filmmaking. Bigelow held a screening of the film for some real Bomb Squad veterans. They agreed with her about the addiction of war, that the adrenaline rush and what they do creates a craving for more. Jim O'Neill, who heads a foundation that helps Bomb Squad techs, told about one tech who got wounded. Um, lost a leg, got blown up. Um, has lost from the, a leg from the knee down. And he's over there and he's in back. Afghanistan wearing he's the bomb back. suit with the prosthetic. That's the personality. I mean, it's an incredible, incredible. It's all very clear. Brad Somerville worked on a bomb squad in Baghdad. After you've been there for a long period of time doing this over and over and going down range and you come home, there's an empty feeling inside. They think Bigelow nailed it when she showed how difficult it was for Sergeant James to go home. He couldn't relate to his wife. You know they need more bomb techs. You want to chop those up for me? 
and couldn't even function when he went to the grocery store to buy a box of cereal. The image in the, uh, the one that I took away the most was at the very end was him walking through the grocery store. And that was the one that got me was it was, wow, it's not happening anymore. And I'm, I'm, I'm back here and it's not real. And it's, it's all back there. And I can remember seeing him walking down the aisles and his, his mind going, uh, what do I do now? Can we play the clip of when Jeremy talks to his son? But the older you get, the fewer things you really love. <laughs> By the time you get to my age, maybe it's only one or two things. With me, I think it's one. Bigelow ends her movie with Sergeant James leaving his son and going back to the war. It was crushing to think he needed that rush, that adrenaline fix so badly he couldn't stay home and take care of his son. You know, that comes at a terrible, terrible price for him, and he knows it, but he's incapable of doing anything different. Frankly, I thought Catherine was going to get this, so I'm kind of, wing, kind of winging it here. And she richly deserves it. Cameron won at the Golden Globes for Avatar, the only big award Bigelow didn't win. And before the Oscars, he predicted she'd win there, too. If she does win and beats you out. You mean when she wins as director? Uh, you, know, you think I, she's going to win? I think it's an irresistible story to finally be able to award the very first directing Oscar to a woman. And Catherine, you know, I mean, I'm sure she'll be very ambivalent about this because she'll be of a mind that, wait a minute, I want to win for the work. I don't want to win because I'm a woman. But I think it's irresistible at the, at the moment of voting, that story. Catherine Bigelow will not like hearing that. She hates being considered a female director. There's really no difference between what I do and what you know, a male filmmaker might do. I mean, we all try to make our days. We all try to get the best performances we can. We try to make our budget. We try to make the best movie we possibly can. So in that sense, it's very similar. On the other hand, I think the journey for women, no matter what venue it is, politics, business, film, it's, it's a long journey. The Hurt Locker ended up winning six Oscars, including Best Picture and Best Director. Catherine Bigelow's collaborator, Mark Boll, a journalist who wrote the script after embedding with a bomb squad in Iraq, won for best screenplay.